In this video, you will learn exactly what the weighted average cost of capital WAC is, why this metric matters when it comes to investing in the stock market, and I'm gonna walk you step by step using the WAC formula for Apple as an example, so you can use this formula for any company you like. And if you stay until the end, I'm gonna share with you a free WAC template that you can use on Google Sheets, where all you have to do is change the company ticker, and the whole calculation will be a lot more easy for you to do for any company you like. By the way, if you're just looking for the WAC formula, you can skip to that part of the video. You can see the chapters underneath the YouTube video that will guide you to that specific part. Okay, so before we get into the WAC formula, let me give you a little bit more context into what the weighted average cost of capital WAC is. If you look at any company, they can raise money in different ways. The most common ways are through debt and equity. And this is something that you can find on the company's balance sheet. The cost for raising debt and the cost for raising equity is different. And it also depends on the type of company and the company itself. So in simple terms, the weighted average cost of capital allows you to see the average cost that a company has based on the cost that it has from raising debt and the cost that it has from raising equity. This mix of debt and equity is also known as the capital structure of the company. So for stock investments, the weighted average cost of capital is a great metric because it allows you to see the average cost that a company has to be able to raise money. And this number can be compared with the company's return on invested capital. If the return on invested capital is greater than the WAC, this is a very positive signal and the the opposite applies. This is the case because it indicates that the company is generating a higher return on the investments that it's making than the cost it has to be able to raise the money to finance those investments. As you can imagine, companies that are in a good financial position have a lower WAC than companies that are in a worse financial position. Therefore, this measure can also be used to be able to assess the risk of investing in a particular company. Okay, so as you can see on the screen right now, this is the weighted average cost of capital formula, also known as the WAC formula. And the WAC is equal to this. What you have to know about the WAC formula is this. So this part of the calculation right here provides you with the cost of capital for the equity perspective. And this part of the calculation provides you with the cost of capital from the debt perspective. So when you add these two parts of the equation, that's what essentially provides you with the weighted average uh, cost of capital because it takes into account both the equity and the debt. Diving in a little bit deeper into the formula or the calculation, you can see that E is equal to the market value of the firm's equity, also known as the market cap. That's a very easy to find value. Then we also have the market value of the firm's debt. So I'm gonna show you how to calculate that using Apple as an example. Then we have the corporate tax rate that is relatively easy to find as long as you have access to the company's financial statements. Then we have the cost of equity. There's two methods that are generally used to be able to calculate this number. And I'm gonna show you both again using Apple as an example. The cost of debt altogether will also be shown to you using Apple as an example. And then V is the sum of E and D. So essentially the market value of the firm's equity plus the market value of the firm's debt. Step number one, it's very simple. All you have to do is find the market value of the firm's equity, also known as the market cap. And the way I'm going to do it is by using Y sheets on Excel. But you can also just go ahead, type on Google the stock name and then market cap and you'll be able to get that value. As you can see, this provides you with the real time market capitalization based on the company's stock price and the share price. Then what I recommend you do is that you calculate the market value of debt. And for that, you have to find a couple numbers. So first, we're going to start with the interest and total debt of the company. Again, I'm going to use Y sheets for that. So this works both on Excel and Google Sheets and it's simple. All you have to do is enter the symbol. So Apple and then we're looking for interest, interest expense. And then I'm going to enter LY to get the latest annual value. And it is value. And if you're wondering what data is available, you can click here and that will allow you to see all the data that's available for the function. The easiest way to calculate the market value of the company's debt is the following. So all you have to do is go on Google and see type in the name of the company 
followed by the word bonds and that will tell you if the bond if the company has any bonds outstanding so as you can see in this case uh, apple does have indeed some bonds that the company issued so we're going to use that information to be able to calculate the market value of the firm's debt the key information here that you're going to use is the coupon so in this case we find that that is three percent and also the maturity date that tells you essentially when the debt or the bond has to be paid and when it's due. So going back to a spreadsheet, we can see that the year to maturity was 2027. So that's five years from the time that I'm recording this video. And then the cost of debt or the coupon rate was 3%. So I'm just going to enter that. It gets a little bit more tricky to calculate the market value of debt is that you need to use all these values that we got before and then put them into this formula that you can see on the screen right now. You can see exactly how the formula works right here and what you have to enter. And by the way, for this reason, so that you don't have to memorize this complex formulas, we're gonna include at the end how you can get this exact template so you can calculate the WAC for any company of your own preference. Once you have that calculation, that will provide you with the market value of the company's debt. Moving on to be able to calculate the tax rate, what you have to do is very simple. All you have to do is take the income tax expense that the company had in the most recent year and then divide that by the income before tax. Once again, I'm using Y sheets to be able to calculate this value, but this is something that you can also Google and look at the company's financial statements to be able to calculate. And as you can see, when you do the calculation, you will get the value right here. There's two ways to calculate the cost of equity, and I'm gonna show you both in this video. The first is to use the CAPM, the Capitalized Pricing Asset Model. And as you can see on the screen, this is the formula to be able to calculate this value. Starting with the risk-free rate, this is something that we can easily Google. Typically, analysts use the 10-year treasury yield, which you can easily Google. But in this case, since the bonds have a five-year life, we're gonna use the five-year treasury yield, which right now you can see it's at this value and it changes all the time. So as you can see, you can just copy paste this value. Now in terms of the beta, an index like the S&P 500 by definition has a beta of one. And what the beta does is it measures the level of volatility of that particular stock against an index like the S&P 500. So if a company has a higher than one beta, it means that it's more volatile than the index. And if it has a lower beta, it means that it's less volatile than the market. For this value, this is something you can find on a site like Yahoo Finance. So as you can see, this is the beta uh, of a five-year period uh, calculated monthly for Apple. So in this case, is 1.23. For the expected market return, this is the return that the stock market has shown or has had historically. And again, this is something that you can Google. In this case, I just Googled expected market return, S&P 500. And you can see that in this case, it's suggesting 11.88 now in this case i want to be a little bit more conservative and what i'm going to enter as my expected market return is 7.5 percent but again this is my own preference and you can change it to whatever you like and of course if you have a different number you're going to get a different answer once you have all of these values it's very simple to calculate the cost of equity all you need to do is enter the cap and formula that you can see on the screen and this is how you do it in excel and as you can see the number that we should use for this calculation should be somewhere in the range of 8.45 percent so that's what i'm going to enter for this calculation the alternative method to be able to calculate the cost of equity is to use the dividend capitalization model and as you can see this is the model right here and this is the formula all you need is the annual dividend per share of the company, the current share price, and the expected dividend growth rate. So what I'm gonna do for Apple is to use the Wise Price function and to use that to get the dividend data of the company. So in this case, you just have to enter the company ticker and then followed by the parameter dividend. And as you can see, you will get this table that's gonna tell you um, the dividends that that particular company has paid in the past. So we can see that this has been the most uh, dividends that the company has paid. So for annual, all we have to do is take the sum until the previous year. So 2021, 085. So as you can see, you take that sum, that's the current annual dividend. 
for the share price we can again use the wise price function to be able to get this value so you just have to enter the company ticker followed by the word price and for the dividend growth you can do a calculation to see the percentage change from time to time I've already calculated this and estimated it to be around 6%, but for conservative estimate, I'm gonna use a 4% uh, dividend growth rate. Altogether, this provides us with a different cost of equity number that we could use and plug into the calculation right here. However, in this case, I'm gonna use the CAPM. Altogether, once you have all the different values that you can see right here, then all you have to do is plug them all into the WAC equation that you can see right here. So as you can see, this is the Excel version. And what's gonna happen is that you will be able to get the WAC for that particular company. But most importantly, the cool thing is, is that you can change the company ticker. All of the data will update with the exception of the fields that are in green. So if you're looking at another company, then all you have to do is replace the data right here like the years to maturity, the cost of debt, and the WAC will automatically be calculated for you. If you wanna do this, don't worry about it. My team and I have created a free template that you can use to be able to perform these calculations automatically. So as you can see, it is exactly the same as the one that I show you in Excel, except this is on Google Sheets, but in realistically, it works on both platforms. Again, all you have to do is change the company ticker and then using different functions, the spreadsheet will provide you with the data that you like. The link to be able to get the free template will be in the comments. And all you have to do is make sure that you use Y Sheets. So this is an add-on for Google Sheets and Excel, and you can get a free trial account that will allow you to get all the data that you want for Apple, Amazon, and Tesla. If you do wanna do this for other companies, then feel free to subscribe to the service so that you can perform this type of analysis. Another thing that you can do, of course, is to just find these values elsewhere, copy paste them and the formulas and everything will still work regardless. So you can do this regardless of your particular situation. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell on so you get notified every time we upload a new video and you can use this information to make better stock investments faster. I'll see you in the next video.